Okay, I've got Quincy Johnson here again. Yes, in the flesh, letting us know he's number one. Quincy is a leader in many fields. One of them is truth-telling. But before we get to that, Quincy, a black man in America, just got kicked off of Twitter. Twitter, a, an obviously racist country in 2019 America. We've seen people getting deplatformed from YouTube, deplatformed from um, iTunes. We've seen deep platformings from Twitter. And now Quincy, a working person, doing it right, following the script, black man in America gets banned, total ban. Not please come back, not we'll see you later, not please apologize. No, straight deplatformed, ripped off of Twitter. Quincy, the floor is yours. Tell us, the fans, the gigantic legion of fans that follow us, I want you to tell them what happened. How does a black person get deplatformed from Twitter, the social justice warrior king of all social media companies? Warren G. Harding is a Negro. That's bullshit. Ah, ha, ha. Man, what happened was this year, um, I responded to a tweet um, about one of my friends having a black eye, and I was just like, who did this to you? I killed him. And if it's this guy, I'll kill him twice. Now, anybody, by the way, the person I was referring to was Michael Brown from the uh, from, from the George Bush administration. Okay. Friends. We yep. follow each other. We joke like that. Anybody who does a search of our two days together, they'll see that we joke like that. He cusses me out. I cuss him out. I call him a nigga. <laughs> we have that. We have that freaking back and forth. That was the one that did it. One of my weakest tweets. And I'm just like, of all the shit that, that you could have got me for, you gave me for this shit. Right. And it it, it pissed. It actually still gonna piss me off because. Let's be honest, man. I've seen way more worse shit on Twitter. Hell, I've said worse shit on Twitter before. And I might get a, a lockout for 12 hours or even a week suspension. But this shit permanently banned? Like, come on, man. Like, I even sent an appeal to Twitter. Like, look, go at Michael Brown USA. He'll tell you. Who joke like that? I ain't mean that shit. Like, what the fuck? But they weren't trying to hear it. My account is permanently suspended. Now, granted, I'm still on Twitter. I ain't going to say how. Okay. But those that want to get with me, you know, that ain't trying to expose a motherfucker, I'm snitching. Um, when this podcast drops, you know what I'm saying, get with Doug, you know what I'm saying, he'll let me know who you be. Mm -hmm. I think that's a profile, and if I, and if I know that you're not an agent or on, or on that bullshit, I'll go ahead and follow you, because I'll be honest, I don't like to chew my horn much, but my time mind does say pretty damn lit. Mm -hmm. One thing, like, I've seen shit on Twitter advocating for pedophilia. Some pages don't get suspended. I've seen liberals and progressives actively call for violence against conservatives. Yes. And or any black person doesn't toe the line. That happens to them, especially if you got a fucking uh, blue chip. Yeah, this is this is the podcast where I curse. Deal okay. with y'all, you know, and, and especially if you got a fucking blue a uh, blue check mark by your name. Mm -hmm. You're pretty much untouchable. Well, if you're a liberal or progressive, you're an untouchable. Yes. Check and, and and you're a conservative or a libertarian. Good luck. Um, but yeah, I, I'm seeing all sorts of foul shit, and nothing happens to them. But me joking with somebody, now I'll admit, yeah, all kind of joke, but a joke nonetheless. Mm -hmm. I'm not really going to kill Michael Brown. Like, come on, man. Like, again, go through my timeline and shit, do a search line, you'll see. That's how that's how me and them talk, you know what I mean? Yes. So, I actually just got the, um, the email back from Twitter a couple of days ago that pretty much said, hey, <laughs> fuck you, we're still going to keep this shit suspended. So, like I said, yeah. uh, I, I went, like, I tried getting, you know, a Google voice number and uh, set up an account. Nah, they told us about your freaking IP address. But I worked around it. Mm -hmm. Those that want to know, tell me that money and I'll tell you I did it. 
I got you. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back on an assumed identity. I'm still talking my shit. I'm not giving a damn. You know what I mean? I'm just doing it under another name now. So okay. There it is. Okay. Interesting because, uh, like you said, and we've seen this before, if you're a member of the blue check Twitterati, you're basically, yes, yes. That's the, that's the American way. Um, the, uh, if you're part of blue check Twitter, you basically have a blank check. Um, and that group that it's a Twitter mob. I've heard, uh, Jason Whitlock, the sports commentator. I've heard, um, yep. other people with, uh, as you say, libertarian, even even quasi libertarian conservative views the way i look at it is if you don't follow the herd if you don't say what those in the cathedral have to say um and follow the script then the progressive cathedral then you take the loss it could be something um like that because even when i tweeted out that you had been banned I don't remember who it was, but you got some fans, and the the dude was like, "It was a joke, and it wasn't even that big of a deal." He's they said do. worse, and I think you got caught by, I think you got caught by an algorithm. I think it's just machine stuff, and they're not going to bend for yeah, you. That's, that's exactly what it is. And they're not going to yeah. bend for you. It's not it's not people anymore. It's here's someone we just he got caught in the net, and the yep. fact that it's a nonsense ban. Well, oh well, tough. Too bad you have no clout. You don't have enough pull. You don't have enough juice to overturn it. So too bad. Now I get it, and this is the libertarian in me speaking. Twitter is a private company. They can ban or not ban whoever they choose to. I get that. At the same time, yeah, fucking Twitter. That's yeah. some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not, it's not even. It's not fair. But in the free market, shit ain't fair. Shit ain't even. So it's cool. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it happened. Right. Uh, had I not been able to get on Twitter again, it would have been okay because I still have people on Twitter and I have their numbers. So I text out a bunch of people like, hey, spread the word. I got mm -hmm. kicked off. I don't know if I'm going to be back on, but I'm going to try. Like, I right. didn't talk to you. Just like, hey, man, fucking Twitter got me for good this time, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, we'll, we'll manage. We just had in the news, uh, Vox day on his, um, on his blog, he had a whole bunch of videos that just got demonetized and a few taken off. Um, Owen Benjamin, another guy who got kicked off of Twitter way before you did, um, the liberal blue check Twitterati got to him. Gosh, gotta be a year and a half ago now. Um, and, um, and all he said was, Little children who are three years old, this one dude was giving his trans child hormone blockers. And he's like, that's not right. That's a little child. That's child abuse. And Twitter kicked him off for that big time band. I mean, like a hammer came down. And so, you know, those, I mean. Can we just let kids be kids? I mean, uh, yeah. can we right. just let kids be kids? Yes. I mean, while there may be some kids who on their own may want to identify as something other than their gender, let's be honest and say at a minimum 80% is parents forcing this on their kids. Mm -hmm. Can we let kids be kids? I right. can't tell you when my black ass is three years old, I wasn't thinking about, you know, I want to be a girl. No, no, no. I was thinking about the motherfucking G.I. Joe with the damn Kung Fu Grill. That's right. I was thinking about none of that, man. Like, mm -hmm. you know, freaking Duck Tail, well, not Duck Tails, uh, Frog Rock, you know what yes. I mean? Like, yeah. That gives me kids, man. Come on. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. So you have all of the, all the normal talk that as uh, a, a guy named um, – uh, Michael Malice just came out with a book called The New Right, and he took a name for the the blue check Twitter crowd, the cathedral. If you and it's the progressive cathedral. If you go outside of those rules, it doesn't matter who you are. You no. get you get banned. And Twitter supposedly a liberal kind of we care about the oppressed and the downtrodden. I don't see it. I see anybody who has dissenting viewpoint get roughed up. Outside, you know. That's what it is. They care about people on their own side. They are very tolerant. They are very inclusive of the motherfuckers that they like. Right. The motherfuckers that they don't like, 
yeah, no. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's what it is. I will say this. So I'm, I'm really digging the fact that at least when it comes to politics and like uh, societal norms, some of the left is starting to eat its own. And I'm just like, <laughs> like, quite honestly, I cannot wait for the Democrat primary season. Yes. That is just going to be a retro Roman clusterfuck. Oh, and man. Maybe I'm here for it. Yes. Oh, I'm God. Oh. Yes. It's, ah. it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be great theater, I'll tell you that. It's gonna be like a beauty pageant, but for ugly people. It's really gonna be something amazing. Wait a minute, though. How is it that, that the Democrat Party is a party of all inclusive people? How is it that the Democrat Party is a party of all inclusiveness and love and tolerance? Mm-hmm. And their front runners are two old white men. Yes. How the fuck does that work? Yeah. How that's my that's my favorite. That's my, I can't wait. I, I'm with you. I can't wait. It's going to be, it's going to be great because their, their tagline is white dudes are terrible except me. Just yeah. this one more right. time right. and it'll be all good. You got Biden saying that shit. Yep. Uh, uh, Bernie saying that shit. Yep. Got that fucking uh, uh, Eric Swallowswell saying that shit. Yep. You know, white men are terrible. Yes. But I'm the cool one. Like, right. Like a hot air. Right. It's great. You notice, you notice how they're not saying too old, too white now. Like, like, like when it was, when it was John McCain, too old, mm-hmm. too white. Yep. They're probably too old, too white. Yes. I just got two old white motherfuckers and. Dutch. Yep. Yes, it's oh, quite man. amazing. If anybody who's and this is where I want to talk about the hoteps because you guys really yeah. seem to pay attention to this kind of stuff, and instantly you see the hypocrisy in a in a way that's different. Um, because the, 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 I like, like, like I said before you, that, that the Hotep movement seems to, seems to notice this stuff. I had seen Hotep Jesus on Twitter and, yeah. And then on, I was at work and I saw uncle Hotep in his car doing like video casts. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a minute. This guy's attitude and his worldview is really different. Before you give us the lowdown on that, though, Quincy, tell me, I, I, I mentioned the Hotep to a, coll- a former colleague of mine, a woman I respect, a West Indian woman who is a truth seer and a truth teller. This woman is not a progressive twit just following the crowd. This woman is legit. But I mentioned the Hotep thing to her, and she put a funny look on her face. So tell me a little bit about what it's all about, and why would a truth telling Jamaican woman who gets it. This is not some kind of progressive teacher weirdo colleague of mine. This lady I have a ton of respect for, but even she had a little bit of uh, apprehensiveness when I mentioned hotel. Why is that? It's because we are not just one big, um, what's the word? The conglomerate. Right. It's like each hotel is an island unto itself, loosely formed together with a with a uh, with a small set of ideas. It's like not every hotel thinks the same, and not every person who says they're a hotel is actually a hotel. Mm-hmm. In her situation, I'm thinking maybe she maybe she um, heard something from somebody who claimed to be a hotel. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> and maybe heard something that she didn't buy well. We get accused of being misogynistic yes. or toxic masculinity. Me personally, because again, I don't speak for all of nation, I want to speak for myself. Misogynistic? No. I love my black woman. No, I love all I love all women, but wait, did I just all lives matter women? Fuck all that. I love black women. Okay? Uh I love my woman, my queen. She is mm-hmm. my rock, my herb. She is my rib. She is my actual rib. She has held me down. As far as being toxic, which I can't stand that for his toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. If a man being a man is toxic masculinity, okay, fuck it, I'm toxic. Okay. Uh, okay. I, um, traditional in the sense that I, as a provider of my family and protector, I take that shit serious. I 
always do what I have to do to provide for my family. I'm the head of the household. I'm the breadwinner. Does that mean that my word is long? You can have me input? No. It just means that at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to use my best assessment. Now, as far as everything else, hotel, honestly, it's about, again, for me, because uh, I don't think for all hotels, personal responsibility and not being a fucking victim. That's it. Mm. That's okay. it. Personal, we, we are living in the day and age of the death of personal responsibility, and it fucks my head up, bro. There are so many people out here willing to blame others for a situation that they put themselves in. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to do this, but then that happened, and then so-and-so came up, and he had my money, so I had to do this. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. I'm not trying to hear it. I'm not trying to hear it, bro. Like, I, I don't like people who act like that. And I distance myself from people who act like that. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason I don't talk to my family now, because they don't want to take responsibility for their own fuck ups. Mm-hmm. I take responsibility, good, bad, ugly. I know that it was on me. Right. Because if you don't have personal responsibility, it's basically saying you don't you don't have control of your life. If you don't control your own life, somebody else will. And as somebody who has been in a been in a position where I was not in control of my own life. That sucks. That sucks, man. I've been there. I wouldn't whistle them or worse enemy. Okay? So personal responsibility, not being a damn victim because I'm I'm not a victim. Mm-hmm. Not being oppressed because spoiler alert, there is no oppression in America. What? What do you say? Yeah, bitch, I said it again. There is no oppression in America. The fuck are you talking about? I can finish the word oppression, but you're, it won't be America. You're not allowed to say that kind of stuff. Then let me say it again. There is no <laughs> oppression in America. If you think you're oppressed, no, you're not oppressed. You're just making dumbass fucked up decisions. Smart enough. Now, do you feel that way personally? Or is that like you yes, the join yes. a whole step nation? Is that part no, of the no, no. credo? What's where is that fit in? I'm, I've been feeling that way way before I became a hotel. Okay. Way before I became a hotel. Now, it just so happens that they were thinking that thing too, which is awesome. But, um, yeah, people when people tell me they're oppressed, bitch, you got clothes on your feet, shoes on your body, and I'm pretty sure you've eaten in the past 24 hours. There's at least 50,000 people in the world that can't say that shit. Fuck you and your bullshit oppression. You're not oppressed. You're just making dumb decisions. Let's just be honest. You're yeah. just looking for a scapegoat to make up for your poor decisions in your life. I'm not here for it, bro. And I would debate anybody and their mother about that. Don't tell me that you're oppressed in America. For that fact, don't tell me that you can't make it in America. And triple on times, right? Don't tell me that you as a black person can't make it in America. So I'm looking at you funny. And I might just say something bad about your mother. Don't do that. Don't do that. If my ass can make it, man, anybody can. And people tell me, and I, I've had I've had many people on my old account. Oh, so so just because you made it, anybody can make it. Yes, motherfucker. Yes, yes. Looking at a man, forty three years old. I didn't make over twenty thousand dollars a year until five years ago. You can be successful. Looking at a man who never got past the eighth grade, and now I'm making in a week. But I, but I used to never make in a month. Yes, you can be successful. Look at a man who was, by the legal definition, homeless. Now I have a house with a down ass woman and a family. You can be successful. I ain't saying this shit gonna be easy. He made downright suck ass. Do it anyway. That way, when you do succeed, it's gonna feel that much better. Because you took all the upcuts and the lefts and the rights and left at the door at you, and you just sat there like, so now you got this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I thought you had more. Seriously, th- 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 don't, don't even sit there and tell me that, that you're oppressed in America. When you're, motherfuckers, motherfuckers are saying that they're oppressed, tweeting from their smartphone. But you're yes. oppressed. But you're oppressed. Well, fucking how? Like, get out of here, man. Like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, and let me drop another truth bomb. Preach. Preach. White supremacy is 
not exist. Oh, you're going to get in trouble for that. That's going to get flagged. You you just got us banned from the internet. Fight me if you disagree with that. Turn your location on. Name a time, name a place. I'm going to talk to you. I'll be there with a load. White supremacy doesn't exist. Because to believe in white supremacy is to believe in black inferiority. And bitch, I'm inferior to nobody. Okay? I'm a man descended from God. How the hell can I be inferior to somebody else? Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? You got me fucked up by supremacy. No, 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 no. I see videos all the time of motherfuckers posting videos of uh, of, uh, clan members or neo-Nazis. I'm supposed to be inferior to them? Or videos of of motherfucking uh, uh, white people doing some stupid shit and I'm just like, these are the people I'm supposed to be inferior to? This motherfucker is, you know, hitting himself in the nuts with a fucking ball peen hammer. I'm inferior to him? Are you serious? Nah, fam. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not in for it, bro. I'm not in for it. I, like I said, I am inferior to nobody. I do, I do not rock with, with white supremacy. That, no. Just, no. No. But- but what about the, what about the argument that says the 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 campus argument is that the white supremacy is where white folk have special privileges they know they're all part of the club and it's built into the system and that no matter how hard Quincy works no matter what he does there are systemic things built in baked into the cake that will block you from getting past the ceiling that's been set by the white hierarchy that it's just you're in it and you don't see it because you've internalized it and you are in as they mates might say on a site like the root a dark place is there any truth to that no my thing is this year if you and this is something really gonna piss off people don't care if you truly believe that if you truly believe that no matter what you do you're never gonna make it. You're never gonna be successful. You're always gonna be stuck in a rut. What's the purpose of even living your goddamn life? Why the fuck would you put those up through that much torture, that much dissatisfaction, that much pain, if by your own admission, you're never gonna make it? What's the point of people living there, bro? And I'm not advocating for suicide. I'm just asking a question. If, if out of your own mouth you said, Oh man, white man got me down, bro. I'm trying to get a job and shit, man. Don't be hurt me, man. I mean, I just can't make it. Here, why the hell are you here, bro? It's like a systemic racism. Uh, I'll admit that racism does exist. Okay, I'll admit that somebody will always hate somebody else based on a race, creed, color, sexual orientation, lifestyle. I get that. Here's my rebuttal. So fucking what? So fucking what, dog? It's 2019. In this day and age, with all the, uh, with all the, what's the word I'm looking for? With all the opportunities, there it is. With all the opportunities affordable, not just to black folk, but any minority. If you're still using racism as an uh, excuse as to why you're not successful, you're doing it wrong. And I say that shit to anybody. Okay? Oh wow, this white person wouldn't hire you because you're black. Guess what? There's thirty other companies that will hire you that don't give a damn about your skin tone. Okay? Have I been shut out of jobs because of racism? Yeah. Did they let that shit stop me? Fuck no. No. Because you can't sit there and tell me that every single person that you're gonna come across is racist. That's a damn lie. Okay? And I would argue that racism is nowhere near the level that it was back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Because if it was, I couldn't be a successful truck driver, okay? Truck driving, by far and large, is a white male-dominated industry. Mm-hmm. By far and large. Yes. If it was really as racist as, as, as the media makes it out to be, I can't be a truck driver, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, I, 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 I to say at least 70% of the truck drivers out here are uh, white men, you know what I'm saying? That's white men from all races, you know, uh, Russian, German, American, Canadian. 70% would easily white men. The other 30% is, is like everybody else, you know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, racism exists. So what? Keep going. Keep grinding. You'll be all right. Again, ain't going to 
be easy, but guess what? Life ain't easy. That's another that's another lesson that I learned. Life ain't easy, bro. If it was easy, everybody would be on top. Everybody would be on top. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's just kind of the fucking winners for losers. Oh mm-hmm. no, we can't have competition now. Everybody's a winner. Participation trophy. No, no, no. Everybody is not a winner. Mm-hmm. All right, now sorry. Some people are just fuck ups. They're gonna be fuck ups. Right. What are you gonna be? What do you right. wanna be? It's right. Question. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Well, I'm saying I'm hey, I'm getting real comfortable on this podcast. And hey. I'm not- that's how we do it here, right? We got, uh, I have, I have, um, I have a, a, a web, uh, not a, a, well, I have a website, but I have a YouTube channel of pure comfort, right? Just ter- just teaching, learning, talking freely. I hope, I hope, can you hear the noise out the back window or no? You don't hear any of that. Okay, because there's people outside. I'm in the Bronx, so sometimes people lack home training. What happened? No, I don't know. I mean, if you can hear it, let me know. But, you know, I, I, people outside without home training talking like they're, you know, screaming, just talk. I don't have, uh, yeah, I guess some people I mean, limit. It is, it is New York City. Yes. Don't respect anybody who's listening from New York City, but I just saw the first, I just saw the man from New York City a mile away. Yeah. Just a mile away. Mm-hmm. Because cause they're not keeping you know they're from New York City. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not keeping you know they're from New York City. Yeah. Up, man, for the Queens, yo, for the Bronx, yo. Yep. Right. It's not. Yeah. It sounds like the two things that you said, particularly about the Hotep movement, the two things that probably get people totally bent out of shape. The first one is you're the man of the house. You're the breadwinner. You play that role as the classical, quote unquote, literally man of the house. I think that that rubs yeah. people the wrong way. And today. Like Right. In the fake America that we live in today, I think that rubs people the wrong way. And the other one is the fact that you refuse to be a victim. I have a funny feeling that that's what sets a lot of people off in, um, in the elite circles of media, of university, of government. The fact that you're not walking around saying, I'm a victim, okay. I'm right. And I think those are the two things. And that's, are those two things central to the Hotep movement? Like, one thing, or is it the couple things that everybody has in common to some degree? It's central to the whole movement. It's very central to me. Now, here's the thing. Have black folk got to do a raw hand in life in America? Yeah. And you can say the same about, you know, the Indians, which I don't use Native American because the Indians were Indians long before somebody came here and decided to call America, America, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, the Asians had a rough time over here when they first came over, which to wit, Asians got a foot broken off in their ass too. If they bitch and moan about it, go get it, honk it down and get to work. Now look at them. They had, now granted, they, it, it, it might be a cold society, but in just about every major city, you can find a Chinatown. Why is that? You think they got that worry about bitching and moaning? Or by handling their damn business. I'm thinking it's option B. Handling their damn business. Mm-hmm. Why can't that be us? Right. Why can't that be us, you know? Right. Like, come on, man. Like, I'm not, you know. First of all, uh, as successful as Asians are, that knocks that whole white privilege bit out the window. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you. Matter of fact, yeah. Two days ago, I saw a freaking homeless white dude, you know what I'm saying? Uh, peeing in a bottle on the side of the road. That guy's supposed to have white privilege? Nah. Don't think so, boss. Right. So. Right. That's the made up stuff to get folks to feel a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Just like this whole reparations bit. Maybe there's not some old people. <laughs> I'm not in favor of reparations. Just nah. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, uh, we don't have the money. We just don't. You know, America don't have the money. Mm-hmm. So if, 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 if they did, let's be honest, no way in hell, Congress and the president is going to give a bunch of niggas that, that much money. Let's just be honest about it. Especially not this president. Like, come on. Come on, man. First of all, if, if, if they was going to pay us, it would have happened by now. Mm-hmm. It would have happened by now. Right. It really gets brought up every few years to, you know, to get people's blood pressure all wild up and to get them to feel a certain way. On a boat, a certain way. Um, so I'm just like, hold on, do it, don't do it. Uh, uh, 
Oh, that was close. What happened? Sorry. Someone, someone oh. almost crashed. Oh, almost with a capital. Oh shit. Yeah, but he uh, he cleared it on the slimmest of margins. Wow. Man. Get out, driver. Get out. I, yeah, that's the that's the trucker's world right there. That's why. Yeah, you, you must see some. You must see some stuff. That's got to be some interesting stories right there. That's your yeah. YouTube channel right there, Trucker Stories, right? You'll be, you'll be insta famous. You'll be YouTube famous. Forget about it. The money will come rolling in. You don't know how to spend it. I'll be keep platform inside of a week. You know it. That's that's why I didn't get on YouTube. No, sir. Like like if I was gonna do it, it'd be just regular podcast. Cause I get my ass on YouTube within like a week. They're like, get your ass up out of here, right? Man. Right. It, and, and Quincy, if what you say, like you speak well about your experience and the, what you see and how you see it, and, and it makes sense, it's quite logical, but if what you say is the way it is, right, then why is the other way? Why is the woe is me, there's a lot of white privilege, racism is oppressive, there's a, a legacy of slavery, then why is it so popular with everybody else? Why is, is it some kind of psychological, is it some con job? It, it, it's, it, it's working if it is. And it takes the responsibility off of people because in their mind, no, I don't suck. It's white supremacy that kept me from getting that job. I'm not an idiot. It's racism that kept me from getting my my GED, my college degree. That whole oppression shit, it feels good because it takes the responsibility off of yourself and puts it on somebody else. Now you have a a boogeyman. Oh, pardon me. Person. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being uh, using the proper terminology. Uh, yeah. Uh, it gives you somebody else to put the blame on. There's a lot of people that just don't want to put the blame on themselves, look themselves in the mirror and say, look, you fucking up. What the hell can you do to make yourself better? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know. I know because I've been there. I used to be one of them cats always blaming somebody else for something I put myself in. Then I hit rock bottom and was just like, this is all your fucking fault, you dumb motherfucker. You dumb motherfucker. Now close up this stab wound, you know what I'm saying, and get up, find a hospital, and then go do something with your life, because this ain't it. You know what I mean? Hmm. That's what it is. It, 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 it puts responsibility on somebody else. And I'm done doing that. I'm absolutely done doing that. I'm at where I'm at for one reason, one reason only. My thoughts, my actions, my words. That's it. That's it. Did the Hotep movement find you, or did you find them? I found them. Uh, I, I started seeing uh, a bunch of people retweeting Hotep Jesus, uh, which, by the way, if y'all don't follow him, it's at Vibe High, B-I-B-E-H-I. Uh, I started seeing some, some of his tweets, some of the uh, dope dudes, which... That's at Dodoobs, D-O-E-D-O-O-B-S. He also has his own uh, health and wellness company, Lola and Doe. that has all natural, all organic skincare, healthcare products. I personally use it. It's good stuff. Um, he also has a book out called Stop Being Poor, which is a phenomenal book. I will post a link up underneath this podcast uh, well, when this thing drops. Yep. But I, yeah, uh, I uh, came across them, and after about, you know, a couple months, you know, I just put out a tweet like, damn, apparently all the time I've been a hotel and I didn't even know it, you know what right. I mean? And started linking up with like other, with, uh, with like-minded uh, hotels, you know? And, you know, we, we just, we united under personal responsibility, not being a, not being a victim, and being the best person you can be. Mm -hmm. Are people sizing this thing? No. Far from it. Far from it. Like, I follow at least, well, I got, I got kicked off. I follow at least 50 hotels. It wasn't a misogynistic, you know, tone from them at all. It's simple. Let men be men. Let women be women. Let kids be kids. There's nothing toxic about the statement that I just said mm -hmm. at all. Right. You know? Yeah. Especially, uh, like the division between the way it used to be in the States and the way it is now, what you are talking about, we, we wouldn't have, we'd have zero audience at all 
if you talk the way you talk now and you said that 75 years ago, people would just be like, yeah, that's normal. That's how you're supposed to be. It may not even have to be 75 years ago, maybe 35 years ago. Like, oh, this guy Johnson, he's just saying normal stuff. What's so exciting about this guy? The sad shame of it all is that we've got now, the way you speak is unique and different and uh, gets you kicked off of places. That's, that's the cry, in my opinion, that's the crying shame of it all. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Don't mind me. I tell the camera to uh, refill my cup. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, so then, um, so then tell, me, tell me then real quick, because you, the, way, the way you're mentioning things and your life philosophy and the, and the movement and all of those things, you specifically, in our last uh, interview, you specifically said in Trump's America, I don't care that it's Trump's America, I and I, other black people could still make it. You're going to have to walk the audience through that because that is heretical okay. language. You just became a heretic with that one. I don't even know what the fuck a heretic means, but okay. Um, You're one. Okay, okay. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. In Trump's America, there's never been a better time for a dumb motherfucker to get a job. Let's just be honest about it. There's never been a better time for a dumb motherfucker for somebody without a four-year degree, because there's, there's a difference. There's dumb motherfuckers, and there's people who are smart, but not on paper. Mm-hmm. They don't have a four-year degree with, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with the initials behind their last name, but they're still pretty damn smart. It's never been a better time for either of them to get a job. People seem to forget, like, it seems, it seems like People are too focused on technology. No disrespect to STEM. For those that don't know STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. No disrespect to them. But as much as you need the engineer, the architect, you're still going to need the plumber, the mechanic, the electrician, the heating guy. You're still going to need those people. People who work and get dirt underneath their, dirt underneath their nails. You know what I'm saying? The truck driver, you know. So for somebody that, like I said, either doesn't have a four-year degree, maybe just has a GED, like me, it's never been a better time for you to get a job. Now, will it be the best job? Starting up, probably not. But you can work yourself up. Oh my God! Did you say pull yourself up by your boots up? Yeah, bitch, I did. I did. What are you gonna do about it? You know. I don't, I don't, I don't get how pull your stuff up by the push-ups sounds bad. I just don't get that. You know what I mean? Um, again, for those that don't want to go to college, there's trade schools. There's trade schools. You know, if you like work, if you like work with your hands, you're damn near guaranteed to have a career, not a job, but a career. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just like. I think right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna lowball it and say there are five million unfulfilled, uh, unfulfilled jobs. Of those five million, hell man, there's gotta be at least a million of them that don't require a GED. I mean, well, that don't require a mm-hmm. four-year degree, maybe like a GED or high school diploma. Man, go all of them, man. Go all of them. I can't tell you, you're talking to talk, you don't need a four-year degree. You know what I'm saying? You really don't. You just got to be, you know, have somewhat of common sense about you, you know, and um, you'd be all right. I mean, if you, if like this, you notice of all the 957 people on the Democrat side who are running for president, yes, none of them are running on, I'm going to make the economy better because they fucking can. The economy is kicking ass right now. I don't care what anybody say. I don't want to hear no person that the economy sucks right now. It's not. It's not. You're you're just doing it wrong. You're not applying yourself. The economy is kicking ass. Like right? I lost out on a on a gig uh, on a low going to California. It's gonna run me uh, thirteen hundred dollars, right? Lost that. Within twenty minutes, I had three other loads that made up for that and added a, a, another two hundred bucks on top of that. So don't sit there and tell me that, that the economy is doing bad because it's not, it is not. My uh, my, uh, my paycheck begs, begs to differ anybody who says that, that the economy is doing bad, for real. 
Now you're talking really differently because my television keeps telling me that in Trump's America, particularly for black people, it's a it's terrible. It's a, just an oppressive horror show. And there are people crying. There are people talking about fascism. There are people talking about just the oppressive boot on the throat. It just never stops. And here you are talking about how you're simply juggling which job should I take, which route should I take, how much money or more money am I going to make doing X activity as opposed to Y activity. You don't sound like the narrative. You don't sound like what I'm hearing or in the scary way what some of my high school students are hearing. And I don't work, at, I work in the black neighborhood. I don't have any white students. And luckily for me, I have great students and they actually see through the BS. They don't really buy into the mainstream corporate media BS nonsense. But you're way out there. You're really talking about how it's good. And you just don't hear a lot of that in the narrative. Because it doesn't fit the narrative. You remember, man, all media is propaganda. Even, even the media that you like, even like, I listen to media, uh, well, I listen to them, I'm going to say it But I take it with a grain of salt because I know it is designed, it is filtered, it is delivered to be put a certain way. So I got to be mindful of that every time that I listen to the talk shows that I listen to. All right now. Oh, so, uh, somebody just had a, um, a no quarter, no mercy decal on their truck, along with do not uh, turn on me. Okay. Not okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just like, all, all media is propaganda, you know? So it's just like, take it with a grain of salt. If you hear something that sounds kind of inky, do some research on it. But they also don't take them out their word. No, 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 no. That, uh, that will have you curled up in a ball sucking your thumb, like, oh my God, we're going to die in 12 years, AOC. It's just, um... Uh, it's 11 years, six months now. We just, uh... The, the oh clock my God! Ah! Yeah. I gotta show my stocking spam! Like, uh, it's uh, getting hot in here, all of the warming going on, so we're running out of time, Quincy. Oh, so close. Yeah. So, but that's, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's such a mix. It's such a toxic mix of stuff that they, they, you know quote, unquote, done, they. Right? What? You know why it's done, right? You know why it's done? The whole, black people can't get ahead. You know why that message is done by the right. And, I mean, it, it, it's done by the left. And on the right, they show images of us robbing and shooting. You know why? Division. Yes. That's all it's, that's all it's there for. The to keep us divided, mm -hmm. to keep us put in a certain way, so that we'll vote a certain way, you know what I mean? Come, come fucking election time. Same like this year. There's a lot of motherfuckers out there streaming. We need to get people out of, out of Congress. We need to start all over again. Term limits, term limits, term limits. But since Nixon, incumbents in Congress, have enjoyed a re-election rate of damn near 80%. Yes, if not higher. That, yeah, that's on we the people. Bro, if you was really serious about this shit, you vote, you vote for the other person. Vote for the other person. You know what I mean? Like, actually, if I ever ran for office, that would be my fucking campaign slogan. Of course, Johnson. Yeah, vote for the other person. I don't care. I don't care. You know, like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just uh, these politicians know that to keep their office, all they got to do, like I said, is come out, do a little grip and grin, maybe every once in a while, deliver a fire and brimstone speech, come election time, show up at uh, some at some rec center or some church in their district, which ah, I will never forget. The only times I ever saw my representative uh, at church in Houston when I was growing up was during the election season. That was the only time I ever saw that motherfucker pop up in my church. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, one of you, dog. One of you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the politicians, they care about two things. The vote and your money. Pass that you ain't shit to them. Let's be honest. 
steel yard, yeah, you might have some pool, but they'll only let you have so much pool. Like full disclosure, I haven't voted since the since the 2014 midterms. Has my life been worse? Mm. Nope. Right. Matter of fact, it's gotten infinitely better. Politicians had nothing to do with it. Mm. He did, he did the uh, the person in the White House. It was me, my thoughts, my actions, my words. That's it. Like, I remember Obama, when he was leaving, oh, are you better off now than you were eight years ago? I'm way better off now. Yo, bitch ass ain't up a damn thing to do with it, dog. You know what I'm saying? It's like, when he first started, I was working at Einstein's Bagels, making nine bucks an hour as the uh, as the uh, prep guy slash baker slash dishwasher. And when he left, yeah, man, I was driving the truck, and I said, I was making you know, a kid anywhere from a thousand to fourteen hundred bucks a week. He had nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. Nothing at all. Nothing right. at all, man. So it's just like I'm not telling anybody don't vote. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you vote, don't get mad if what you think is gonna happen doesn't happen. Right. Keep going. Keep right. going. And there seems to be way too much uh focus on politicians as the bringers of all things good. Right, that this is somebody who is akin to Jesus and will save us. And if only this politician gets in, then oh, it's going to be great. And it seems to me, I mean, I, you know, I'm not like you. I'm very independent, so I say libertarian. You know, I'm, I I don't really have a dog in the race when it comes to Republican or Democrat. But the the this this like you said before, man, this Democratic primary season is going to be intense because everybody, if you look at what they say, they they say platitudes and nonsense, and then they say, "Here's all the free stuff I'm gonna give you." Right, right. That's, that's all it is. I that's all it is. I it's, cannot wait. I can't wait. Like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to and watch as many Democratic primaries as I can. Cause God, who needs Netflix when you got when you got the primary season? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, at, at this point, I want to know somebody just to come out and say free blows off for everybody or free hair for everybody. Cause, damn, dude, like, you, you almost run out of free shit to give out. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And if I may speak on the libertarians, mm-hmm. hey, y'all, y'all like y'all, I rock with y'all. So, so if this does offend you, I don't say this too much, but my bad. I'm sorry. But here it goes. To a lot of people, in the Libertarian Party, they wholeheartedly believe it's either White House or fuck you. I'm sorry, but it just doesn't work like that. As much as Democrats and Republicans fucking hate each other, they're not going to let somebody else come in and take a slice of the pie. So they will link up like freaking Voltron to keep your ass out of there. Okay? Right. First of all, you just can't jump from, well, Trump did it, but that's Trump. If the Libertarians want to get anywhere, stop focusing on the White House. Win a city council. Win a school board. Win a mayor. Win a governor. Run a state for a couple of years. Let them know that you can do it. Then go focus on the White House. You know what I'm saying? Crawl, walk, and then run. But to a lot of Libertarians, just yeah, White House. No, 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 man. That's why I keep losing, man. So you got to put mm-hmm. those off the first. Like yes. Said, go to, like I said, go to your school board if you got kids. Go to the city council. Run on that first. Go for mayor's side, freaking railroad commissioner. Something. Something right. local or something at the state level. And show the nation that you can handle that. Then you can work your way up to the White House. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, that's um there's a strategy uh a guy I used to read a lot, a guy named Gary North, old libertarian from the old days, and it was echoed yeah. by Tom Woods, a guy who has a really good podcast, uh the Tom Woods show. It's called the Dog Catcher Strategy. If yeah. you want to run for something, start at Dog Catcher. Run for Dog Catcher. Start there. Don't like you said, don't jump to try to leap all kinds of hoops and try to get the brass ring at the end. 
run for dog catcher. Start there and then work your way up. Rather than trying to go to the fullest and the utmost from the start, go for something small and local initially. And that would be maybe more successful, like you say, than, yeah. oh, let's get somebody to run for president and see if we can get 7% of the vote. Even if you do, which would be a yeah. record, it's still ineffectual. It's still exactly. getting you nothing. And, and all you're doing is spit the vote. It's like, right. um, who did they run last time? Uh, oh, yeah, freaking Jerry Johnson and um, yes. uh, what's his name? Uh, Weld? Bill, yeah, Bill, Bill Weld. Weld. Yeah. First of all, uh, with all due respect to Gary Johnson, Jesus fucking Christ. Dude, 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 go, go back to New Mexico or wherever Governor mm -hmm. ran at. Chill there, bro. Chill there. All right? Because even I know, even I know what the fucking level is. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right. even politics, bro. And even if you didn't know, you could have bullshitted them. You know what I mean? You, you, honestly, you honestly got in front of the camera and said, what is the level? This just ain't Jeopardy. What the hell? Right. Like, oh, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right. Like, yeah, you can't um, do that. Yeah, like I, I heard him on uh on this talk show post that I, that I like and everything, and the, and like the guy was nice. He gave him ten minutes. That was like eight minutes too long, man. Because that was that was just a train wreck, man. He was mm -hmm. stuttering. Yep. Stammering. I'm just like Jerry. Mm -hmm. Jerry, what are you doing, man? Were you not prepped for this? Like, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, mean, I remember somebody, uh, before I got kicked off, yeah, you what up? Uh, hey, man, why don't you want to be president? You don't want me as president. <laughs> you don't want me as president, dog. Trust me on that, my homie. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, you wouldn't like me. First of all, I'd be shot in a month. That was, I, I wouldn't guarantee. I'd be shot in a month with all the shit I, I put in the place, Jesus. Yeah, man. First things first, every politician is taking a 50% pay cut. If you don't like it, then fuck you, quit your job. Every, every other federal employee, you're taking a 25% you're taking pay cut. Okay, you don't like it, then fuck you, quit your job. I will freeze. No more, no more new employees as, as, long as, as long as I'm president. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you have to balance the budget. Every year I'm in office, well, I'm not signing shit into law. Okay? Gotta have a balanced budget. And every budget must have an offset. Meaning that if you propose a new bill that's gonna cost $10 billion, you have to cut $10 billion from the federal budget to offset the cost of that bill. And my wife was just like, yeah, you're right, I don't want you to crazy. I'm like, I told you. I mm -hmm. told you. Like, right. <laughs> You do not want me in there, bro, at all. First of all, it's gonna be real. It's gonna mean you here every day, you know. First of all, most of uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm making weed legal, but set it up so that big farmer can't get nowhere near it at all. Which, if you notice, there's been a, a freaking CBD kick down. It's almost everywhere in the city. It's it's everywhere, even here kind of in, in in government heavy New York City. It's everywhere yeah, you look. It, it kind of frightens me that there's that many CBD products. Now, now, now if this purely by the whim of the free market and capitalism, okay, cool. My concern is somebody locking up all the patents for CBD in hopes that marijuana does become legal. Now they got a fucking monopoly on all this shit. And yes. they're like, well, yeah, weed is legal. Mm -hmm. That's the only buy from us. Right. And we're going to, you know, hike up the price like 85%. Mm -hmm. In Colorado, that's just happening right now. It's like weed is legal, but re uh, recreational marijuana is way more expensive than medical marijuana, mm -hmm. which is why there's still a black market in Colorado for marijuana. Because it's mm -hmm. just like, why pay sixty dollars for a eighth of weed of of uh, recreational marijuana when I can call my cousin and get that same eighth for half the price? You know what I mean? And probably get a leftover plate from uh from his mom or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, I don't know, man. I mean, I would I would I would love to see weed legal if it's handled properly. Um, but I don't know. And I can also say that 
say if weed ever does become legal, Texas will be the last state to do it, and they'll be doing it, kicking and screaming the whole yes. fucking way. Right. I, now. Yeah. The the um you know the the way the way we're talking all of the kind of off the grid stuff all of the yeah. you know talking about topics bouncing around uh, in terms of national affairs and policy and what have you, a lot of young people like this kind of thing. But what happens is they get indoctrinated by again the quote unquote cathedral. What do you recommend for somebody like teenagers? Uh, people to either listen to, like, I mean, I'm asking you a very difficult question. How do you break the spell? Because like I said, the way you talk and the, you know, it's Trump's America and black folk have a rougher time of it and there's racism everywhere and there's a patriarchy and hoteps are um, misogynists. I mean, our young people get buried in all kinds of stuff. What what would you do or what do you recommend to them to break the spell, to break the cycle of more Americans just getting thrown into the abyss of progressive, nonsensical, social justice warrior babble? Easy. Listen to the people that they tell you not to listen to. There it is. Listen to the people that, that they tell you not to listen to. Get the other side of the story. Because there is two sides of every story. Always. Maybe, maybe more. So, maybe, maybe there are four yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe more. So, so whoever they tell you not to listen to, them the motherfuckers you need to listen to. Okay, and I'm and I'm saying that as you know, um, like full alert, back in the way, be hardcore liberal, hardcore. Republicans are bad, man. They shut up. Then I got a hold of uh, Alex Jones and Russ uh, Limbaugh. And I was just like, man, these motherfuckers ain't all that bad, damn, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, that kind of, you know, broke me away. And so I listened to more people that I wasn't supposed to listen to from the left, from the right, from the, I don't even know what the fuck you are, but I'm going to listen to you anyway. Um, Coast to Coast AM, um, uh, Red Eye, Red, uh, Red Eye Radio, you know, again, just listen to who they tell you not to, you know what I'm saying? Find mm. out why they don't want you to listen to them. It's like, I see and hear a lot of people on the left, well, Trump said this and Trump said that, but they never actually play the video of Trump saying this or Trump saying that. i give you a, a, a good example. This whole there were good people on both sides of our win. Yes. He said that. But almost no, actually nobody on the left plays the 10 seconds after that sound bite when he says, and I quote, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis or the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. Mm -hmm. It was in the down, they don't, they don't, they don't ever play that, that part of the words. It was just, oh, he said that there was good people on both sides, which, in all honesty, there were. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that to anybody that wants to hear about that. You know, but but it, but it seems like in this day and age, everybody just cares about the little the little two second sound bite and nobody wants to go deeper than either a sound bite or a headline. You gotta go deeper than that. You gotta you gotta, you know, read the whole article. Right. So, like you said, to to the people that, that wanna, you know, break away. Um, and I'm not gonna say get, get off the plantation because I hate that term. You know what I'm saying? Like we, yeah, I don't, I don't like it either. I think it's, I think yeah. it was a bad move on Candace Owens' part. I, I yeah. think, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. bad. It doesn't have the right sound. I, I, I think it's gonna blow up in her face. Exactly, exactly. I mean, like nobody's selling Jews get off the plantation. Come on, man. Right. Um, so I would say, listen to the people that they tell you not to listen to, and just go from there. Because I guarantee you, it'll be like a bunch of six degrees of separation. You wind up someplace that had nothing to do with, you know, where she started at. And you'd be like, okay, I learned something that I did not know before. All right, then. Good, you know? Do people ever call you rough names, the sellout, as the nicest oh, one I can think of? Oh, I'll do. Sellout. How do you deal with it? If, they call you na if they're calling you names, oh, really? Oh, they so they get rough. They call you worse oh, things. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. House nigga. I'm sucking in job and uh, I laugh at them, dude. Like, I don't even respond because somebody talking like that 
no amount of you explaining your case is going to change their mind or whatever. So I'm just like, hi, right, whatever. I'll be a cool. Now, the ones that are somewhat civil, I love, you know, talk to them. And I've actually, you know, conversed with a few people like, damn, as you said, all the way wrong or not. You're, you're not this. You're not that. I'm like, you're right. I'm not. I'm just some guy who will do whatever it takes to keep his head above water. You know, that's it. But all the name calling, uh, okay, well, first of all, they can't say going to say it to my face, first and foremost. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, yeah, whatever. You know, like, I, I, I've been called everything but a freaking child of God. So it's just like names just roll off me now. I'm just, I don't care. I don't hmm. care. You can call me whatever because way bigger people, way more important people than you have told me all. And I'm, I don't care. Like, honestly, true story, and I, I might say this for the next uh, podcast. I had one of the daughters of a major NFL team get right in my face and call me a limp dick faggot because I would not let her backstage. I laughed at him. It's like, that's sweet. Now get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> you peon. Mm-hmm. Absolute one. This is back when I was working concert security. Okay. And uh, one artist who shall be named Nameless. I thought Snoop Dogg uh, was being a real jerk. Yeah, I said it. That ass. Calvin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His manager came up to me and was just like, yo, man, when Snoop on stage, you don't want nobody backstage that ain't working. We don't want no artists, no VIP, no nobody. So now I got to be a gig. And so all the people I've been letting back and forth for the past 14 hours, now you can't come backstage because Snoop Dogg said so. Right. Oh, my God. That was uh, that was almost not fun. <laughs> right. right. I'm sitting there like freaking, like Samson at the gates and shit holding the gates closed. Like, God, he's done it 30 minutes. Man. Come on, man. Come on, come on. And they're sitting there rushing the gate and everything like a fucking battering ram. And uh, I remember these two stagehands came up to me. Yo, dog, you good? You need some help? And I hit them with their fucking um, triple X. And I'm like, I left for this shit, motherfucker. And, just like, and they start laughing and take off everything. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I would say that me doing security has definitely gotten me some thick skin. Okay. Like, it's rare that you can get under my skin with something that you say to me. Okay. Rare. Yeah, because I'd like I'd like to talk to you about your other jobs. We'll do more of that the next podcast. But I mentioned the name okay. calling thing because it's very effective. It seems to be the method yeah. of the day that using shame to get people who have strayed from the narrative. People have strayed again. We mentioned you know uh, the 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 name calling that you hear. We've mentioned the the way it's done. It it. Yeah. unfortunately works a lot and that's the shaming and the naming the deplatforming like you've done something wrong it, it's yeah. it's almost like church like you're a sinner and yeah. now you're going to pay and your shameful self needs to go somewhere else and i it's i'm a reasonably optimistic person but the fact that the name calling and the shaming works so well is a little depressing yeah and i would say to people get some things and get over it i don't get shamed anymore I don't get embarrassed anymore. I've already had more than my first year of shame and embarrassment. So that shit means nothing to me, especially from somebody coming on a damn uh, app that I'm probably never going to meet in real life. Like, how the hell could you possibly shame me? How could you possibly embarrass me? Even if you quote unquote box me, you don't want to show up at my house. It's going to be a bad situation for the both of us. Mm-hmm. It's, not a it's an announcement. You don't want to do that. Get me fired? My, my boss already told me the man, look, uh, we've been to your timeline. This, this is before I got kicked off. We've been to your timeline. Rest easy. We are never gonna fire you off of off of, off of uh, what you off of what you tweet. Never ever ever. And this is three people. Two of them are actually on the right side. They're hardcore, not good people. The other person, third one, he is a guy that will liberal. But he also understands that I can give them 4,000 miles in a week. So he's willing to swallow his pride and let me work for him to go get that money. Yes. I'm just like, 
do your worst, bro. All you're going to do is just embarrass yourself. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And all that, all that damn gotcha stuff, man, one of y'all going to get shot. And I'm not going to feel sorry for y'all one damn bit. The same goes for all this, you know, uh, fighting shit in the street and everything or, or, or confronting people. Man, what are y'all going to get fucked up, bro? On yeah. either side. And I'm not going to feel... I'm not gonna feel sorry for you, B. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like if you, if, if you got somebody show up at their crib and, and they put a hot one in your leg or your gut, sitting there with your dumb ass there on the back, some idiot. Yeah. It's you why know? I have it's why I have contempt for the media because they'll play along with this game and what's gonna happen is somebody they're gonna dox somebody and it's gonna be just some regular person and they're you know it's you gonna, know gonna be West, it's gonna be in West Virginia, it's gonna it's going to be somewhere and that person is going to fight back either hard or soft. It doesn't matter. And then what's going to happen is our detestable corporate media, the vermin who inhabit those places, they're going to say, Hey, look, look at the right, the far right winger or the libertarian or the somebody, look at this conservative person. Look at how violent they are when they're these, these are the people that have perpetrated it. They're the ones that have created the situation. And then the backlash that they do like, see, look, look at what they're like. I mean, I have such contempt for corporate media. It's not even funny. And you and I both know what's going to happen. Tell me what you were going to say, that it's already happened. Uh, viol- you know, self-defense is not violence. It's self-defense. It's self-defense, it's like, yes. Yeah, it's like if, 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 if you go to a and say, hey, Quincy, I want to fuck you up when I see you at some site, and then we see each other and I'll fuck no ass up, that ain't violence or something, bitch. You came at me, bro. I was minding my own business, chilling, watching Doctor Who. You came up to my front door, talking that bullshit, trying to throw punches, or trying to freaking milkshake me. Yep. I defended myself, bro. Now, granted, you know, my level of, my level of just defending myself may have been more than your level of, you know, trying to milkshake me, but hey, ain't no rules in a fight, motherfucker. There was one with you. Now, I don't want to fuck up anybody. I don't. I'm not saying I'm a freaking pacifist. I don't want to fuck up anybody. At the same time, if, if, if you're harming me or trying to do me harm or trying to, or trying to harm my family, I'll do whatever it takes you to protect them. Up to and including laying, laying, laying my life down. And that's not tough talk. It's just me calling people out on their bullshit. Mm-hmm. It's like, I feel like these streets all the time. I'm going to fuck this person up. I'm going to shoot them. I'm going to kill them. Anybody can say it, bro. You actually have what it takes to walk up on somebody and pull the trigger and then deal with the consequences? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. First of all, you motherfuckers are getting triggered over chalk on the sidewalk. How, how, how could you possibly fight somebody? You're getting triggered over somebody saying, <laughs> you're getting triggered over a MAGA hat. Yes. Yeah, but, but yet you think you can whoop my ass. Yeah, okay. Okay, buddy. If you say so, big mm-hmm. fella. Like, I was so disappointed in, a, in my fellow brothers and sisters the day after the election. There's all these sad tweets coming up. Oh, man. I'm literally shaking. And I don't know what I'm going to do. What I tell my kids. Trump's going to report us by the African What? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's it. First of all, you're a U.S. citizen. You can't be deported. Second of all, two days ago, you were talking that strong black man, strong black women shit. I don't care who gets elected, I'm going to be all right. And now that Trump got in, Trump got to Lily Shake. Come on, dog. Really? Really? Like, I remember, sorry, um, pardon me. Um, election day, I sent out one tweet. Early that morning, because I remember I was I was in uh, California, and um, yeah, I remember I sent out one tweet like when I'm three in the uh, like when I'm three in the morning. I look, it's my first and last tweet. I don't care who wins. I don't want to hear 14 hours of freaking you know speculation. Because no matter who wins, I'm still gonna get up, inspect my truck, get these miles in, and do what I gotta do to keep my head above water. Mm-hmm. I don't care who is in the White House. But I'll say this, whoever does get elected, you're going to find out real fast, real quick, how little power the president is supposed to have. Because now there's no longer a black guy in the, in, the, in the White House, we can go back to business as usual. Because during Obama's term, nobody wanted to be uh, seen as saying no to the first black president. 
Mm-hmm. So for the rest of that day, that shit was me, uh, anime soundtracks, uh, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and Slayer. That was it. Slayer. So, yeah. Slayer. Slayer. Oh, so, man. Okay. So, Yo, that's... Things are all over the board. Wow. Um, that is a group name I did not expect to hear today. Let me tell you. Brother, heavy metal, bluegrass, jazz fusion. I listen to a little bit of everything. Nice. Okay. So I uh, finished my day at like, I don't know, seven o'clock. Went to sleep, got up the next morning, and uh, went on to uh, to MSNBC. And I saw that, that uh, Trump won. And my first thought was like, shit, the nigga actually pulled it off. Good for you. So I got up, put my clothes on, inspected my truck, and kept on rolling. You know what I'm saying? Because again, I didn't, I didn't care who won or not. Like, if, if Hillary came on, I'd be like, oh well, business as usual. And still mm-hmm. got up, inspected my truck, and handled my business. You know what I mean? It's like people are too invested in politics. I get that they make the laws, they make the regulations. You're still a man. I think the key word will we'll end with this because we came full circle, but the way you put it, again, very earthy, very legit, because you said, don't get so emotionally invested and you have the top of the pyramid playing with everybody's emotions all the time through their mouthpieces in the media. And all it does is divide people up and get regular folk fighting back and forth and nothing, those, you know, it's the old divide and conquer, which works. And you yeah. know, your, your comment about don't get so emotionally invested is is great it's difficult to do that because we are emotional people but i think that really goes far especially towards younger people who are in generally more emotional more active more into stuff um because because of their you know they're young and eager and they want to learn but that that's very well said because I, i really think that that's one of the tools that people at the top those in i guess if you want to say the the powerful folks they use to get yeah. everybody bent out of shape. Yeah, man. Hey, um, did you say you had something to do after this or no? Yeah, I'm taking my wife out to dinner. Okay, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Because I was just like, yeah. no, we can't do two podcasts, but you guys, you got something to do. We'll do. Oh, yeah. I mean, and again, I apologize to all the women out there watching this. I'm married, right? So I have to apologize <laughs> to the American ladies. Um, so stop blowing up my cell phone because I'm not I'm taking. So, you know, I, I know that hurts, right? We just lost about 10,000 fans with that comment. Sorry, Quincy, but uh, I, I have to be me. I, I have to tell the truth. So, uh, but that's you know how what? it is. You know what? If you're telling the truth, so can I. Listen, uh, Halle Berry, you cool and everything, but <laughs> I hit my DMs, okay? Please don't send me any more of your panties. Right. Uh, Right. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You fooled everything. Loved you and Catwoman, but my girl getting mad if you send the panties in the mail. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I tell you. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll have to. We'll have to deal with that with, with these people uh, 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 on social media. Just tell them to back off a little bit because uh, they they uh, as the young kids used to say uh, ten years ago, they they're ODing a little bit with that. So I know yeah. we're we're yeah. popular people, yeah. but uh, sorry, sorry, ladies. Uh, and not gonna happen. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, let's let's let let's end with that. With our with the you, the sound you hear is us losing fans as they as as the as women find out yeah. that we're we're not available. Although YouTube is a is a YouTube is a funny place. So I I, I don't know. We'll we'll get back to that. But um, yeah. um, we'll end with that. We will do another podcast soon. So our legions of yeah. fame will uh will definitely get more. We'll talk about. I want to hear about your older jobs the ones you liked, the ones you hated, how much money did you make or not make. Uh, so I want, I want a good, a good 60 to 90 minutes because uh, I have some old jobs, probably not anything as exciting as you've had, but uh, uh, we'll go back and forth a little bit on the, the, the dirt that we ate before we got to the mountaintop where we are now. Um, oh, yeah. so, um, but let's do that. 
Um, I'll, I'll sign off, stay on, and we'll chat a little bit. But uh, Quincy, again, thank you. Uh, I will, as usual, put this in front of students. Not going to be a big deal this year because the school year is ending, but it'll be part of my run of videos that we'll use for young folks. And we'll warn them about the profanity because... Yeah, I was going to say, Mama, hit that beat button a whole bunch. But shame, I, mean, shame. I told you, hey, I, hey, I told you I was going to get real comfortable with okay. the podcast. And I did that. <laughs> okay, good, good. But real talk is what we need. Real talk is yep. what you and I provide, and we'll do more of it next time. Yes, sir. Okay, you got it.